All right, guys, can you hear me? Beautiful. Um, so I'll give it to uh, Tom and Tyrone from here on out and they'll start presenting. All right, everybody, we will get started. So, okay, well, thank you very much for coming out. Another Learn It Live. Been a few weeks since we were last here talking about what we were doing. Uh, so looking forward to doing tonight. I think it's the first time we've covered probably Tyrone's favorite topic, one that he's followed for many years, which is divergence within MACD. So we're going to cover quite a few things, uh, but first I'd like to introduce myself. My name's Tom and I'm here with Tyrone as usual. Hi everyone and welcome to tonight's Learn It Live. Uh, divergence is going to be a very fun topic. Yeah, as I said, definitely Tyrone's favourite. So just to get started, want to go through the risk warning. Uh, the information provided here has been produced by third parties and does not reflect the opinion of Pepperstone. The information has been provided without any alteration or verification. Uh, so as always, just that risk warning, this is your money and you've always got to be careful with it. So what we're going to be covering today, we're going to be covering how to spot divergence and convergence patterns. We're going to be looking at what type of divergence is most reliable. A lot of people don't realize there is multiple different types of divergence and they're used for different circumstances. Uh, so it's very important to understand that. And some facts about that you don't know about MACD, you'd be surprised how little uh, people have of an understanding of the MACD indicator, yet everyone seems to use it, but they don't know how it works. So we'll cover a little bit of that. and. As always, Q&A. So we love it when you guys ask questions and we usually try to focus on answering some of those questions at the end. So if you have a question somewhere through and you think it's relevant and you want to have it answered, uh, just put it in the chat and by the end of it, we'll try to get to most of your questions. So I want to start, and I think Tyrone's probably best for this bit. We want to talk about MACD, which is Moving Average Convergence Divergence. In fact, a lot of people don't even know that that's what it stands for. Uh, but Tyrone wants to go into how is it actually formed. Okay, so part of using an indicator, you know, when you are putting your trade plans together is really understanding what that indicator is trying to tell you. Like uh, Thomas alluded to, a lot of people use the MACD indicator and actually don't understand why and how it's formed. So we're going to have a very quick intro as, as to what makes the histogram form. So we can see here on the screen, we've got the, the blue line and the red line being the 12 EMA and the 26 EMA. So you'll notice on most standard MACD settings that the 12 and the 26 are very prominent and a very standard number uh, when you actually put your indicator on. So whether you're using MetaTrader 4 or any other trading platform, this is a very generic style of um, setting for MACD. So the 12 and the 26 represent the first part of the histogram. Okay, so we can see here, we've got the 12 as the red, and the easy way to remember that is that yeah, red cars go faster than any other color, apparently. So it's a very easy way to remember that the red moving average is going to be the fastest one. But of course we know that because it's always above the blue one when the market is moving up. So that's telling us straight away that it is the faster moving average. So the 26 moving average, which is the second part of the equation, basically forms the basis of the histogram. So what the histogram is representing is the distance between, oops, just let's go back. Yep. Yeah, the, the distance between the red EMA and the blue EMA being the 12 and the 26. Okay, so in this example that we've got on the screen, we've got the 12 and the 26 on the chart, but without, well, after this lesson, you're going to know that you don't even need this on the chart because we know that the MACD histogram is actually representing the distance between these two moving averages. Okay, now how we use the MACD indicator to trade divergence uh, brings out the importance of why this is the, this is the you know the key to having what MACD is trying to tell us. When the fast moving average is above the slow moving average. Uh, by a, a significant period, we can see here, as we can see the price is accelerating up in this example, and we can see that the red moving average, the 12, is accelerating away from the slower moving average. And in the process, we can see that the histogram is increasing all the way up to the very top. It only starts to decrease when the momentum starts to slow down, and you can start to see the 12 EMA coming closer to the 26. Okay, so we can go to the next slide now, and we'll see that every time that the MACD indicator is basically going from below the zero to above the zero, we're seeing a crossing of these two moving averages, okay? So when the fast moving average is above the slow moving average, you'll notice that the histogram is above the zero line, which is a standard level on all MACD indicators. And when the red line, the 12, is below 
the blue line, okay, the histogram shifts below the zero. Okay, so you can see here every one of these lines that we've got, these vertical lines are showing every cross of these moving averages, and we can see the momentum shifting in price. Okay, so that's what, what, what basically forms the histogram of the MACD. Now, the red line that we see going through the histogram is just a nine moving average of those other two moving averages. Now, there is a, um, a process in itself that, um, that you can trade with that signal line, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to focus on divergence and why it's important when we're using the MACD indicator. Yeah, so I just want to reiterate, a lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand that it's actually the histogram is formed by those two moving averages. And it's really important to understand that because once you understand what's actually forming it, then you can see how divergence works and only then. Uh, and I have trained a lot of people over the years and they do not know that which is really surprising because they're putting thousands of dollars into a trade and they're basing it on MACD and they don't even know what's going on. Yeah. And this serves as a lesson to all these all the traders out there, whether you're beginning your journey or even if you're you know, advanced and you've been trading for a little while, it's very important to understand what the indicator that you're trading is uh, trying to tell you from a, a fundamental standpoint, not uh, because of some YouTube video saying it's a short here or, or long there, really understand what the indicator is saying because it really opens your eyes to what the market is trying to tell you and then what the indicator and how it's reacting to what the market is trying to tell you. So really understand your indicators. And do remember with all the indicators, they have to make sense. Everything in the market needs to make some form of sense. And usually it's because it's based on something that's psychologically happening in the market as well. So always just think about trying to understand each indicator before you've mastered it. And then when you know how it's formed, then you can start to master it. So let's just have a quick look at the live charts and, and talk about some things that are happening, I guess, in the live charts at the moment. So one that Tyrone and I have been talking about for a little while is the uh, probably the pound US dollar. There's actually a form of divergence here, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but I just wanted to show uh, the pound US dollar obviously in a bit of a short run at the moment, the US dollar strength, uh, at least on this pair and the euro and a few others. But this is a classic case where we've talked about this before, but there's actually a pattern that was formed, a large pattern that was formed on the pound US dollar daily. And a few people will know this, but this is a large double top. And we'll talk about this a little bit uh, in the future to do with how we can spot MACD divergence on it. But one thing I wanted to show was the power of these patterns when they break, because you can see here the distance of these of this double top to the neckline, which is here, when that does break, or the intervening trough, when that does break, it should go that distance again. And that's kind of like the self-fulfilling prophecy. This is what traders do. They push the market to another area based on something that's usually previously happened and enough people are adding their orders along the way uh, to push it to this level. So we'll talk about how we can introduce MACD to this, but I thought it was a good one just to jump into the charts and show what's been happening recently. And I think this is the clearest one of all the US dollar pairs. Well, certainly the most recent one, yeah. So let's, um, let's delve into um, some more information on MACD divergence and it will make the, it'll just make it a little bit clearer for you to understand what we're talking about. Now, there are three classes of divergence, um, and divergence um, from a standpoint of indicators isn't always restricted to MACD, okay? You can have divergence on stochastic indicators, momentum indicators, RSI, all of the indicators can have divergence. But what the word divergence is essentially telling us is that price uh, being on the chart and the indicator are actually diverging away from each other or converging if um, they're getting closer together. So that's where the MACD uh, comes from. That's where the name, the acronym MACD comes from. But specifically divergence is what we're going to discuss here. And basically all it's doing is explaining and showing us that the indicator and price are moving away from each other, okay? So let's have a look at class A divergence as a starting point. Class A divergence is considered amongst the strongest of the divergence family, mainly because it's probably the most significant. You're seeing different uh, movements from uh, price and, in the, and the indicator going in completely opposite directions. That'll make a little bit more sense when we look at class B. But if we have a look here at the first one where we see price is making a new low, okay, but the indicator is making uh, a higher low. Okay, so in a general healthy market, 
the indicator will be following what price is doing and replicating essentially what it is doing. So when price makes a new low, the indicator will make a new low. Uh, new low. That's a, the sign of a healthy market. Here's okay. a good example for you. So this is an example of class A divergence in, in a real market. We can see here that price has made a new low. So Sorry it's gone lower than the previous trough. Here's okay. the previous trough. Yep. Here's the new trough. Yep. And the MACD, as we can see, is actually rising. The peak, uh, the, the trough of the MACD, the second trough, is higher than the first trough, which means what we talked about earlier about the 12 and the 26 moving averages. On the second trough, the fast moving average is a lot closer to the slower moving average than it was at the first trough, even though price has made a new low. And that's where divergence comes in. The indicator is giving us a different signal to what price is telling us. Price is telling us that it's pushing lower with more momentum, and the indicator is saying that the momentum actually isn't there. Mm. So it's a classic case of basically where the markets might look like price action is telling you something, but the indicator is saying, well, hey, 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 we've got a different story here. The, the pressure that we think this is coming down within the market is nowhere near what it was last time when it was over here. And that creates an opportunity for us as traders. And this is what they call class A divergence. So there is three types and we're probably just gonna cover class A and class B today because we feel that they're the strongest. Class C, not that widely used. And, and the thing with all of our Learn It Live webinars and everything is we wanna use stuff that we know is used in the industry, we know has some fundamental basis to why it's used and it's used with bigger money. So class A and class B very largely used in the And markets. probably most importantly, it's actually what we use every day. Like we actually don't use class C divergence, although we no. can explain it, we don't actually use it. So we're not gonna teach you anything and, and, we don't Well, use. what's the point of learning about something <laughs> you don't use? You know, we, we don't use it quite a few indicators and there's a reason why. But um, this particular one, I think that's a good example of class A and uh, it's something that you do see. You don't actually see that good of versions of it that often. You see a bit more, I think, Class B with a lot of patterns. But uh, Class A, when it does appear and you correctly analyze it with a few other reasons to be in, definitely worthwhile checking out. So let's now take a look at Class B before we jump into the live charts. So here's an example of Class B. And Tyron, do you want to go through this one? Okay, so with Class B, it's a little bit different to the Class A in that we can see that the the price has made an equal low, so basically forming what looks like a double bottom, and the indicator has made a higher low. So in Class A, the price has made a, a lower low. In this one, it's made an equal low. But in a sense, that doesn't make Class B any less powerful than a Class A divergence because quite often we're seeing a pattern here form. So we've got the, um, the benefit of actually having a pattern that's actually solidifying the divergence that we're seeing, okay? And the same goes for a, a double top, of course. But let's have a look at this example on the Class B divergence on this uh, live chart or a real market chart. And we can see here that yeah, price, has made, <laughs> yeah, price, price has made uh, an equal low, as you can see. It hasn't gone any lower, but um, what it has done is formed a base at what potentially could be a support level from uh, a previous area. But you can see that the MACD is rising. So you can see that the trough, the second trough on the MACD is again higher than the first trough of the MACD, even though prices come down and touch the same level as the first trough. Okay? Yeah. So let's take a look at this in the live charts with that pound US dollar example. So if we were looking at this chart, let's zoom it in. Yes, we are using a daily. Mainly, main reason we like dailies, we do use them when trading. Uh, we also like four hour, one hour and weekly as we've always discussed. So with this one, what do we have or what's happening with price? So we've got price, basically reaching around the same highs over here. And what's happening with the MACD? Well, when the MACD first reached this price, it was quite high. But when it reached the price the second time, it definitely was nowhere near as high, was it? And that is what kind of divergence, Ty? That is class B divergence. Class B divergence. And I love class B divergence probably more than A because you can bring it together with a story from other things. So what we'll see here is we've got our class B divergence, we have our double top with the intervening trough with the break. And when that breaks, to me anyway, this is putting together the pieces of the puzzle and enough reasons to be in the trade uh, for us for us to get involved. So I really, really like class B, but you can see how powerful this particular MACD one, it was very different. The power was very different. So just to really highlight um, exactly how MACD works, what I'm going to do is we're going to pop on the moving averages, the 12 and the 26. Yep. And just to show you how different they really are at both of these troughs. Um, and just to show you how the histogram actually works, because 
what we're seeing here is you know, not just a signal that is saying that the market is losing momentum. There is a reason why it has lost its momentum. Okay, so we, we just pop these two moving averages on the chart now. So we're going to pop a 12 EMA on. Oh, we've got to, okay, we'll go to just change it. It's simple to EMA. Oh, yeah, I'll put Sorry. the other one as uh, EMA as well. One second. There we go. All right. Okay, so we can see here very clearly that the fast moving average, which is the 12, uh, you can see it accelerating away from the 26 all the way up in this very, very strong uptrend. And even when it reaches highest peak, you can see that the distance between these two moving averages is at its, light, at its highest point. And that's why the MACD histogram is so high. Okay. But when prices come back down and touch the same, roughly around the same level again, you can see clearly that the, the distance between the 12 EMA and the 26 EMA is a lot smaller. This distance here is a lot smaller than it was here. So what that's telling us is that although price has gone up and touched the level again, which is basically you know, a form of resistance and at a double top, it's done so with a lot less momentum because with the, only, the only thing that can make the momentum on the 12 EMA slow down is a, a price fluctuation that's actually not showing the momentum that it did at the same uh, peak here. Okay, And that's consequently what we're seeing with the histogram. We can see that they're a lot closer here. And to measure that in pips, I can probably tell you it's about... It's a little bit up. Oh, it's a little bit up, sorry. Let me go and have a look. Okay, so that's um, an 80 pip gap there. Okay, and here it is almost um, 180. No. It's more Somewhere. than double. Yeah. Okay, so the distance between here and here is almost double, okay, in the, in the first one. And what that's telling us is that even though price has got to the same level, it's done so with an extremely low momentum base according to the moving averages. Okay, so it's really telling us what uh, what we want to know. Don't worry about the fact that the um, the neckline of the double top has nearly come down to touch a previous point of resistance, because all it does is really solidify the double top. But in this instance, we're confirming the double top with MACD divergence, which is always the best way to do it when you're confirming one pattern with an indicator that yeah really agrees with what you're looking for. And yeah, this is clearly telling us that the weakness is there. And yeah, I think that's the thing. Whenever you're looking at the market like this, let's think about this logically. What's happening? Well, the market is obviously weakening. Why is the market weakening? Well, potentially there's less buyers and there's more sellers. So that is what in essence we want to be following anyway. So when we see like this, these kind of divergences, really what it is, is it's a precursor to what might happen. And what we're trying to do is get an edge on the market. And therefore, if we can recognize this situation, we can then place orders, add to orders, and be very consistent in our approach to trading. And what we always preach is treat trading like a business, because when you treat it like a business, then you have the respect for it, and you always keep the statistics in your favor in terms of you keep it consistent with your trading methods. So once you bring in MACD divergence into whatever your trading method might be, it will give you that extra tool to bring into your trading method and keep it, hopefully then you can add it and keep it consistent. Now, one of the biggest criticisms of technical analysis in general is that, you know, things look very clear after the fact. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this all the way over to what it would look like if we were actually trading this as a, a live example. And we can see very clearly that if this is all the information that we have and this is a live chart, we can see that we're at a point of a potential double top here. Okay. But as you, what we can also see is that the MACD is still showing the divergence. It's not like the divergence has formed after the fact. The divergence is happening in the here and the now. Okay. So that makes it very, very tradable. Now think about this from another point of view, that if this was a potential double top, but this MACD peak was actually up here then yes, is it a double top potential? Absolutely. But is that double top anywhere near as strong as it looks now? No, because it has made the second peak with the same momentum as it made the first peak. So there's every chance that price is going to push up and continue on in an uptrend. There's a very good chance that this double top may fail, primarily because it has got momentum actually pushing up to make it a new peak. Yeah, absolutely. And then we can talk about, well, how do we get into this trade? Maybe for some people, they don't want to just preempted up here when they see this, they might want further confirmation. So even within the MACD uh, indicator itself, we can just wait potentially till the 12 and the 26 cross. We can literally say, well, until the 12 and the 26 cross, which would be what's happening on the As soon as Instagram, the Instagram goes from above the zero to the below the zero, and, we know we've got the cross. And where do we see that, Tyrone? We see it in a lot of reports. So 
on the daily, you'd be surprised how many of the big banks put out daily reports and they say MACD has crossed from the positive to the negative. I'm sure many people have actually heard that. Now you know why and what they're talking yes, about. Yes, and they do trade off this. So when that 12 and the 26 basically is crossed, you've already recognized that the market was showing weakness due to this class B divergence. You could potentially start placing trades here. But wait, because we know this is also a double top, we can also say, well, if it does break past this intervening trough level here, we still think the market has the distance of the double top in it. It's the, in essence, a double top is the end of a trend and the start of another trend. So then all of a sudden, you can hold this trade, continue to hold this trade, and take it off somewhere around this completion zone down here, which is very close to. So it, it gives you potentially the starter to ignite more trades or to get into extra trades. And it shows you something that the market is, is obviously telling us as technical traders, but it won't be telling those price action traders. It's kind of like hidden. Yeah, absolutely. And now for all of those people who are saying, well, a daily chart just moves too slowly and I want to trade a 15 minute, how is this going to help me? Now, MACD works exactly the same way on the smaller timeframes, but when you do your analysis on something like the pound that we just looked at on a daily chart, we know we've got an extreme bias to the short. So we're basically looking at shorting opportunities on all of the smaller timeframes because we know we've got the prevailing uh, movement on a daily chart in our favor. So when we're you know, swimming with the tide, uh, we're always gonna get further. And that's how you actually trade it and you use multi time frame analysis to help with your decisions. I've got another one here, which is again, class B, but I thought it was just good because it was relevant to this week and it was something I was looking at with uh, one of the students. And and that was this this US dollar CAD four hour. So four hour this time, not daily, but as Tyron says, you can take this to 15 minute, you could use one hour, you could use anything. But what we have here is we've got this clear support level. I think we've got this nice breakout to the, to the upside and maybe this is finding the support. Um, and this support becomes effectively a channel up here, which needs to be broken. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing again that class B divergence across the bottom with with you know smaller MACD here, which means the 12 and the 26 are a lot closer together. And when it does break through, we could potentially get involved with the trade or we could just be seeing this class B and waiting for the cross to the positive. So a lot of different opportunities here and you can see it's been quite successful so far. Absolutely. And look, if you look at this as an example, I mean, this four hour chart's a great example of the recent price action since uh, early, well, sort of middle of March of this year. But yeah, we've got divergence examples everywhere here. We've got some class A divergence right here that obviously it signified quite a uh, big trend reversal. Yep. Put in the verticals there so everyone could see it. Yeah. So we can see that the that trough there corresponds with the trough of the MACD and we got the same thing right there. So we can see that price has made a lower low, MACD has made a higher low, off we go. Uh, another example is we can see here that got more class A divergence there. We can see that price has made a, quite a higher high than it did in this previous area. And you can see that the MACD has not backed up the price movement. So it is, yes, it has reached it um, quite quickly, but it's done so with a lot less momentum than it did here. And we know this because the fast EMA is considerably higher than the slow EMA here. And at a higher price point, the fast EMA is a lot closer to the slower EMA at this higher price point. Yep. So there's three very, very clear examples on a four hour chart that all had significant moves in the direction of where the divergence was indicating. Yeah, definitely. And, and look, a lot of people say, well, with divergence, you know, are you, do you need special percentages or something of difference? It's not really about that. It is about you, you want to see a weakening in the market and you really want it to be obvious. If it's not clear to you, it's not clear to the man with $100 million. And that's just how you have to look at it. These people that are pushing the market, their jobs could be on the line in, in terms of if they don't have successful trades over a six or 12 month period. So they're not going to just put in their trades on a five minute chart. They are going to be looking for one hour, four hour daily, weekly kind of uh, trading opportunities and they will want to make sure it's clear. So they want many reasons to be involved. And when it comes to uh, understanding what the indicator is telling you, it really comes down to common sense. Like we can see that each and every one of these divergence examples that we can see on the USD CAD, um, the, the peaks and the troughs are at least 50% lower, which means that the 
the moving averages, the faster moving average, is only half the distance that it was at the previous peak or trough. So common sense is telling us that um, prices got there with only half the momentum that it had previously. So when those peaks and troughs are too close together and you have to really you know, squint your eyes and think about whether they're higher or lower, then they're probably not and they're not really obvious enough to trade. Mm. And, and it also is going to keep you out of uh, out of trouble with a lot of these things because if you're looking at something like, uh, say, this this euro US dollar, it's obviously in a monstrous short right now. It's been shorting now for for a few weeks. And if we're if we're looking at this MACD, I mean, this MACD is pretty nasty to the to the short side. Yes, there was a little bit of bullish movement here, but overall, there's no clear dis, you know distances or differences between yeah. these these MACD. And that's a very clear example, actually, that Thomas has, has got here of what price and the indicator does in a normal trending market. You can see here that the distance between the 12 and the Let's 26. Get rid of those. Okay. okay. We can see here that the distance between the 12 and the 26. Um, all the way down this trend is nearly the same, and that's reflected in the histogram. Okay, same here. We can see that it, the distance between the two is nearly the same. The histogram is reflecting that, and what that's telling us is that the, the fast-moving average is being absolutely belted to the short. So yeah, this trend is very, very strong, and it's not showing any signs whatsoever of weakening. So until we get you know, a sign that the fast moving average is starting to slow down and momentum is starting to shift, there's no reason to be longing this trade. And generally, if you are going to see solid class A divergence, you are going to usually see a fair bit of consolidation. Uh, so why, whether that be a consolidation to potentially some form of, not double bottom obviously, because it's going to make a new low, but you know, some form of consolidation like that, or you're going to see uh, even just the market just pause for potentially a few days, like more than a few days. It needs a few days to set up these kind of these kind of setups. So yeah, especially on the bigger time frame. Yeah, yeah, on this on this four hour daily. So at the MACD, if you can correctly read it, it really will keep you out of a lot of trouble. But just like anything, I mean, you know, with these trends, this is a 12 and 26. And as Tyrone says, the 12 is just getting belted all the way down. Do you really want to be, you wouldn't want to be counter trending this kind of market uh, with class A divergence. You'd be looking for other opportunities as part of your trend based uh, system. So what we'd be looking for instead was maybe consolidation down the bottom, then look for class A, very clear class A. Or sometimes you can actually look for class A in the direction of the trend or class B in the direction of the trend similar to that US dollar CAD, where we saw the, the the trend here was up, it pulled back, it's found this support here, we've got that class B divergence, and we're to the buy side, which is consistent with what we're looking at, and um, yeah, we can get involved. And you can see here, this is what's happening with the trend. So that's the nice pullback, that's the pickup, and this is the longer term, what's happening on the chart. If we go back to that euro just for one second, sure, we can see that what what preempted this very on the if we drop back you to the four hour, hour chart, sure. yep, we can see that what what preempted this um, very strong downtrend was actually a double top uh, with divergence. So we can see here that um, we've got our our top that has formed. I'll just draw that a little bit straighter, and we can see that we've got MACD divergence. Okay, that's just showing us how strong that now, as we as we all know, that's class B. Okay, but like Thomas alluded to earlier, the class B is sometimes more significant than the class A because it can sometimes reverse a trend. And when a trend does get reversed, it can be very, very aggressive in the in the initial move and continue on as it has here. Yeah. And what you'll notice is that usually this is what is going to happen. It's telling us that distance should be approximately around this much. And often the market will prove that by it being the next level of support. But in this case, what's happened is it's com it's completed that and it's continued on. And of course, that was the start of something that was much bigger. Yeah. And that's that's very large. And that's that, large. And that's what happened. When, when a quality double top or a quality double bottom does does happen at a key area, it can sometimes begin the catalyst for you know what you will see here. If we're not going to go back, uh, we haven't got the time to do it today, but for, for those of you who are looking to do a little bit more research on MACD, if you go back to the GFC, if your charts uh, go back that far, you'll see very, very heavy divergence right before the very big drop in 2007. I believe um, Pepperstones do go back Yeah, that far. it's on the indices. Um, you'll see it on some of the key areas. Uh, divergence is the catalyst for some of the biggest moves in the market. So just go back and have a look at it and you'll see what we're talking about. Yeah, I cannot reiterate enough um, or as much like how much like UBS and all these other big banks 
they really, whenever you get a chance to ever read some of their, you know, their mail, I guess they mail out, they really do use MACD a lot. Uh, and the industry uses it a whole a lot. So it's a great one to learn about and put into your trading arsenal, just like Stochastic is very popular as well. And, and you don't want to mess with these settings. A lot of people say, oh, I've got like, you know, a special one. And it's like 14 something, something. I yeah, <laughs> just yeah. made it up. It's there, look, 12.26.9, it's in every trading software and specifically the bigger ones like the Bloomberg terminals and stuff. And, and people um, definitely use it. I mean, you just, you don't want to mess with something that's good. If you put your own numbers in and you're the only one seeing it, it's going to be a very lonely dinner. So, yeah, it's best to play. I don't think you'll be having dinner. You, you won't be having dinner. You'll be at the soup so, kitchen. <laughs> we don't want to do that. So, yeah. yes, anyway, that's... Uh, but that's We're not even touching on the fact this is just a beautiful... The, the amount of down uh, trending opportunities you had here to actually enter and join this trend is just ridiculous. You can see what Thomas was talking about when it did break the neckline and actually fulfill its destiny at this point here. It's come back and re-tested uh, that uh, support level that was previously support, which um, anybody who's done any of our courses would know is a, a role reversal area and a mm. very key selling point. And you can see the catalyst for that just continually uh, smashed it down. All right, we'll just jump back in. I think one thing that we always want to talk about at, with any of these kind of sessions, and you can always get this recording, by the way, it is being recorded, so you can just ask your Pepperstone uh, representative to do that. Um, is talk about building a strategy. So one thing that we firmly believed, I think this is probably when we became successful at trading, it really made a big difference to us, was create basically a business plan around more than just one chart reading technique. I think that was a big problem that we struggled with. We would often use like one or two reasons uh, to be in a trade and it just wasn't enough. You really need a, quite a few things, including MACD, including candlesticks, including whatever else you want and you want to bring that together into your trading technique. So very, very important to create a business plan and you want to use consistency when trading your systems. So I cannot reiterate that enough. Don't just dump a system after a couple of lost trades. If you really do lose you know, faith in it, even just run it side by side, try to still keep taking those trades and even run it in the demo or very small, like, you know, live accounts so that you can keep with it and see how it really works over time. Now, a lot of people say, well, your business plan sounds like a lot of work and how could you possibly do a business plan when you know, you're basically placing a trade? But when you think about it, even what we've talked about tonight, if you are trading a double top in isolation, then you're really you know, taking a chance that a pattern may or may not continue because you're not really sure about the momentum. But when you add the extra element of MACD, you've actually got an extra reason, uh, another reason to be basically placing that trade and thinking that that double top or double bottom has a better chance of success because you've got momentum weakening in the direction that you need it. And how we can make that you know, part of a business is basically saying, well, let's pretend um, that you're the manager of a, a milk bar and you're going to have a really, really hot weekend coming up. So you think you're going to order a lot of milk because you're going to make a lot of milkshakes for that weekend because the weather's going to be hot. Okay, that's probably a sound way of thinking about it. But imagine if not only was the weather going to be hot on that weekend, but it just so happens that there's a triathlon carnival and an extra 10,000 people are going to be in your town. That's a lot more reason to buy that extra milk for your milk bar because there's another reason that other people will be buying your milkshake. And that's no different to adding MACD to um, yeah, a potential trade. Yes, you've got a reason to buy the milk because it's going to be hot, but you've got a better reason to buy it because it's going to be hot and you're going to have a triathlon uh, and you're going to have an extra 10,000 people potentially buying your milkshake. And we're going to make a lot of money that way. Yeah, like that way. <laughs> <laughs> Milkshakes are delicious. It's all good. So what we actually did, one of the things that was really big for us, as I said, is business plan. So we actually created what we call the pre-six system. Now, this is part of our course, but I think we should bring it up because I think it, it represents everything that everyone should be doing. And you can see here it says price action, risk management, ELD, which is multi-time frame based stuff, chart patterns, indicators and charting techniques. So the idea is that every single time we're placing a trade, we use one, of, we use each one of these areas and we have a specific point in each one of these areas, isn't it, Ty? And, and by doing that, we keep our trading consistent. We've always got multiple reasons to be in a trade. Absolutely. And you can see here that indicators has its own um, you know, preset in this, in this as it does so chart MACD's patterns. So MACD's in there? Like straight away, we've got MACD. Straight away, we've got a chart pattern. Okay, straight away, we've got the ELD system. We know this because the, the bigger time frame on the daily is short. 
So yeah, without even opening the Prestic uh, system, we know that we've already got three of the elements already there. And that's how fast it can be to set up a trade plan. No one's saying that you have to sit there and you know spend an hour putting together a plan and then the trade's already gone by the time you actually pull the trigger. No. It can be very, very quick. Price action can be as simple as something like a, a shooting star candle or a hammer candle in the direction that you need in the right location. And charting techniques are as simple as support and resistance. So yeah. risk management takes care of itself. That's just a non-negotiable well, be in, any, that yeah. a non in any trade plan. So it's very important to follow these steps because it really makes you look at the bigger picture from you know a, a very high view as opposed to a very narrow view and just seeing a, a chart pattern and saying, okay, I'm going to run with that and you know we're going to trade it without really knowing where the trades are, where the trends are in the bigger time frames, what the indicators are telling us, what the current price action is telling us, and also are there any charting techniques, in particular support and resistance, that are supporting what we actually want to do in the first place. Yeah, so having that business plan, having that strategy, very, very important. Uh, one thing we've done in every one of the webinars before this point is always talked about building a strategy using points. This is using points, but also using specific reasons to be in it. So it's very, very important you set that up for your trading. Uh, anyway, look, that's that's pretty much our uh, our stuff for MACD this week. Um, we obviously have covered Class A, Class B. They're the ones you want to stick to with your trading. Uh, and I think that you can you can apply Class A and Class B. You'll notice to stochastic and other things, as Tyron said. So if you start to master those, even if you look back over the slides and then start to look for them in the market, you'll be surprised they do they do turn up. And they may turn up in your already existing system and help you to get more confidence in your system. So uh, do we have, Xavier, any questions that anyone's asked? If you have questions, just quickly put them in as well. We're more than happy to answer them now. Yeah, we've got a couple of questions actually. I've just uh, shared them with you, Tyrone. Um, and there's okay. a few more coming now. Um, and so on, I'll just share Could them with you. Too. Yeah, I don't know if I can see them. So That's we'll... right, I can just read them out if you like. Yep, sure, just read them out to us. Beautiful. Um, so we had one in just in regards to how the histogram worked. Um, so was that made up by the two moving averages? The question was, how exactly is that put together? How the histogram works. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So we can go back to a, a very quick example. It's probably just easier showing you. Um, you want me to go live or just the one in here? We can go live. Uh, we can go in here. That's fine. That's a pretty good example. Okay, so again, just, just quickly, the histogram basically measures the distance between the fast EMA and the slow EMA, the 12 EMA and the 26. As the fast EMA accelerates away from the slower EMA, the histogram gets bigger, and as it starts to slow down and come towards the slower EMA, the histogram gets lower until they eventually cross, and then the histogram starts the same process on underneath the zero until the Fast moving average again crosses above the slow moving and average. And a good good way of really remembering this: add the 12 and the 26 EMAs to your chart, just like we did in the live chart here. So you can really see how it how it forms. You can see the differences, and that will get you really thinking about, oh, this is why it's happening. This is why the market's slowing down here. This is what's actually happening to price. So yeah, good question. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Um, we had another one, and this one's a little bit different, but um, it was just in regards to entry points when using MACD. Now, um, yes. how would you guys sort of enter trades or look at entering trades um, with MACD? Yep. yep. So if you find MACD, I think, around like another pattern, you could potentially wait for that pattern to uh, break and then get involved at that point. Sometimes because you are noticing the, MAC, uh, the MACD divergence, you're actually kind of precursoring what the market is most likely to do or statistically probable to do. So what I like to do is I like to wait for the 12 and the 26 to cross, and then I would potentially get involved with the trade. So say like here, if we were getting involved when the 12 and the 26 crossed, that would be literally when, the zero, when it crosses from the positive to the negative. When that does happen, which is a little bit before you'll notice, the break of the intervening trough, we can then place our stop above the high here or above the last swing and get involved in the trade. So it, it sometimes does help you to get in a little bit earlier. I'll go to that US dollar CAD just quickly. So here we've got um, the trade, potentially we may have taken the early one here. So we'd wait for the cross to happen, which would have been here, get involved in the trade, place our stop below the low, would have been in for a little bit of a hairy one because each way it went, but at the end of the day, it would have been um, successful. I mean, we'd already be up, you know, over 180 pips here. So quite a lot. Took a little while, but it is a four-hour. 
So, you know, you can expect to be in four hour trades for a couple of days. Fantastic. And just the last question, it's a bit of a segue into the next one. Um, mm -hmm. Can you use uh, MACD to exit your trades as well? Can you use it to exit? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, look, if you notice this kind of thing happening, so I guess if we go back to the pound, great example of exiting, one we actually did as well. So if you look at this pound, well, I mean, let's say we're in the long, we're in the long, long term. Let's say we get in down here or something and we're in for ages and we see it reaches high and we think, okay, it's going to continue going. Often the market will give you a sign to get out. And this is just like indexes. So if you ever look at the ASX 200 or the S&P 500 or stuff, it does happen like this with MACD divergence as well. It will often reach the same high, create this high, and then we'll see the cross. So when the cross happened here, you potentially could have closed your big long trade because you would have said, okay, well, we see this as potentially a double top. We also see this as class B divergence and we've got the cross. So it's enough confirmation for us to cut this trade up. And a lot of other people would have their stops below the last swing. You could potentially be out here and, you know, basically benefit from another 300 points rather than, you know, losing that 300 points. So, yes, you definitely can use it. Excellent. Sounds good. Um, actually, I might just pop in one more if that's all right, Tom. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, there, was one, uh, there was one about the MACD contradicting each other in different time frames, and what's the best way to approach that when you're seeing it? So if you see it daily, it's, you know, showing some divergence and then a different time frame showing something else. Yeah, so contradiction of MACD, Ty. What do you think about that one? With the contradiction of MACD, it really depends on the trade that you've placed, what you're trying to achieve from it. Okay, so if you've placed a trade on a double top, uh, say on a four-hour chart, even um, if you're getting contradicting MACD signals on a 15-minute chart or a one-hour chart, you're going to ignore them because at the end of the day, you're going for a longer-term trade. Okay, so you really, the, the MACD you want to really be paying the most attention to is the one that's the most relevant to the time frame that you're actually trading. So if your double top has appeared on a, on a four hour or your double bottom has appeared on a four hour chart, you'd be paying particular attention to the four hour MACD and the daily MACD. A lot less uh, attention to any 15 minute or one hour divergence. Similarly, if your pattern is on the 15 minute chart, you'd be ignoring MACD signals on a five minute and a one minute chart, of course, not that we'd ever recommend you trade on a one minute chart, but regardless, because MACD on a one minute chart, of course, you're talking about 12 minutes uh, forming a, a 12 EMA. So it's not really gonna give you anything that's reliable. Remember that with trading, every, every time frame that you move up, so the bigger the time frame, the more significant the signals. Okay, so the bigger the time frame- Because they've taken longer to form. They've taken longer to form, there's more people seeing it. The four hour and a daily chart, everybody is seeing that because all the world markets are open at the time that it's presenting. Whereas a five minute chart can have divergence shifting every couple of hours and you're only you're, seg you're segmenting a lot of the different world markets in that time. So in short, you yeah, stick to the MACD and pay the most attention to the MACD that is relevant to the trade that you're placing. And just think of this one as well. This is a daily double top that we're seeing here. We're checking out the daily MACD. But if you looked at the four hour, does it really make sense for the four hour MACD over here and over here to have divergence? No. So maybe if you saw like class A or something from here to here, you could potentially pay attention to that. But overall, we would love to see it on the same time frame as the pattern we're seeing because we are trading the pattern potentially as the base of our trade and the MACD is augmenting or helping our trade. It will override all other MACD signals. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, so that's good. Uh, all the other questions will be answered and we'll make sure our account managers get out to you and uh, answer those fully. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah. all right. Well, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending as per usual. We'll be at it again in the next couple of weeks. And uh, if anyone's interested, I think if you jump on, um, uh, actually, our website, we'll be doing some stuff on pre I think, in the next couple of weeks as well, just as a webinar. Um, so if you jump on and just get access to, I guess, the free course, the, the one that's on fxevolution.com, uh, you, can, you can enroll in that one. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for coming out, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Great. Thanks a lot for your time, guys, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Thanks, Tyrone. Thanks, Tom. Cheers.